everyone, I'm Michelle Smith and welcome back to my channel. I have a special video for you today. In today's crafting adventure, we're going to do a paint with me. I found some really awesome stencils that I picked up on Amazon.com. I will include the link in the description box below if you're interested. And I've been wanting to do this technique and make a video for you. With a few simple techniques in painting, you can create several different looks to fit any home decor. Let me show you how to make them. Okay, so you're going to need either a stretched canvas that comes on a frame or a canvas board, which is basically just a board that's been covered in canvas. Dollar Tree carries both of these and they do carry different sizes. So depending on what stencils you're going to use for your image, you can choose what size is best for you. Now this is the package of stencils that I got from Amazon. This is the size, you get 12. I'll go through them quickly for you. So I really do like them. I have been looking for a while to find stencils of silhouettes of humans and animals. And I was so happy that I found these and I thought they were reasonably priced since you get a dozen for $6.99. And they have a little bit of everything like this is Sea Life. Another one for Sea Life. And then your deer kangaroo. Now this is the first one I'm going to be using is this one across the top with the two birds on the branch and then the nest with their babies in the middle. So we're going to be using that one on our first one. I also have this one. I really like this one with the antlers and the giraffe. Dinosaurs. This one's really nice. I love this again with the birds, the deer and the grass. And the final one. So I thought that was such a nice find for $6.99 to get a dozen of those. I thought it fit very well on this small canvas. So we're gonna put the birds just slightly below center. Now when I do the birds, I'm going to keep it really simple. I'm just going to do the silhouette and I'm going to do it using chalkboard paint in black. But my background is going to be very colorful. So I put out all of my paints. They're all apple barrel, pale daffodil. This one is Laguna. Spring Green, Kelly Green, Holly Branch, and Nutmeg Brown. And then I also have White. So when we're working on our background, my goal is to blend colors starting from the top and working down. I want it to kind of look like a sunset in the back and then get into the green foliage and then the brown but it's going to be all mixed colors all the way down with the silhouette on the top. So I'm gonna start with a little bit of the white paint just so that I get some moisture on my canvas. I'm gonna go a little bit into the yellow. Now you wanna do this when the paint is still wet. So you don't wanna to take too long and feel free to blend and don't be afraid to go back and go over it again if it doesn't come out quite the way that you're looking for because it is paint paint does blend and you can easily cover it up it is one of those things that are very uh, forgiving when it comes to painting now 
And when you're working on a canvas, make sure you get the sides. You want it to, uh, the image to come all the way down on the sides. If you're working on the boards, you don't need to worry about that. Now you can use uh, whatever paint you want. Uh, acrylic or craft paint works very well. You can even use chalk paint if you want a really kind of flat background. And as you're laying down your paint, the thing is you just want to keep it wet as you're working with it. You can get in and you can mix those colors. And there you go. I like that. So just play with it, add some more paint. If you get too much on your brush, just take it off. But you want to work fast when the paint is wet. You don't want it to dry. Once it dries, it's harder for it to blend together. So there you go. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and set this aside and let it dry and then we'll move forward. My background is all dry, so we're ready to move on to the next step. So you'll need your stencil, and this is optional, but I always like to uh, kind of tape it down. That way I know it's not going to move on me. This is just your regular painter's tape. So decide where you want to place your image. In these projects, you learn how to blend colors and how to get your background set up. And then you can have fun finishing it off using stencils. Now I'm going to be using the CraftWise uh, black chalkboard paint that I got from Dollar Tree. This paint is nice and thick, which is good. It'll help so that it doesn't um, bleed. And then you're also going to need a pouncing brush. This is the best way to apply paint to a stencil. You want to get some paint on there, push down your stencil, make sure you're getting good contact, and then you just want to pounce up and down and fill in the space. Okay, once you're done, go ahead and lift and pull off your stencil. I did get a little boo-boo. I did not cover up a stencil that was below and I went a little low. But there is my silhouette. And that's okay, I can clean that up. So I got a little bit of this goose's uh, wings here because I did not cover it up. Now anything that's close like that, you want to cover with tape so that you don't get it. Like I should have covered the seven and then uh, the tips of these birds. 
Now to clean your stencil, you just want to use like an um, antibacterial wipe or a baby wipe. So my little boo-boo here, I took one of the wipes and just gently cleaned that area. It did take off some of the green, that's okay, but it also removed the black. And I'm going to start at the bottom with the darkest green that I have. So again, I'm getting moisture onto my canvas. Because like I said, this blends much better when the paint is wet. So once your black paint is dry, with just a very small amount of paint on that brush, you can go through and finish blending everything in. As long as you don't have a lot of water on there, it's not going to lift up that black paint. There you go. Now I do want to extend my stem so that it comes off so it looks like it's growing from a tree. I'm just going to take a detailed brush and a little bit of the same paint and finish that. If you need to, you can also go over and clean up any lines or anything that doesn't look right to you. Like I said, paint is wonderful because if you make a mistake, it's easy to go back and fix. Okay, so I'm going to go in and just clean up my black lines a little bit until I'm happy with it. And then I'll come back and show you the finished product. There you go. I went through and cleaned up all my black lines. I also went in and added some more leaves along the branch there. I think that looks really cute. Now you can always uh, go in and add even more if you like. You could put some wording. You can maybe put blessed or something like that across the top. I think that would be really pretty. And of course, you can do whatever color tones in the back that you like. Okay, I'm going to set this aside and let it finish drying. Okay, so we're going to do another one. This one, I want to do the giraffes. So I kind of have a whole scene going on right here. Uh, I have a mama giraffe and her baby. I have a couple birds flying. I have a tree that's in the same plane as the animals. And then in the background, there's another tree. So I'm going to do this whole scene. So to do that, you want to find where your horizon line is going to be. Now your horizon line is where your sky meets your ground. And you can figure that out by placing your little guy here. Now I don't want my animals and my tree to be right on the bottom, so I want to make sure I'm up from the bottom. But this tree that's in the background has to be lower than the horizon line. Okay, so you see that? That way it looks like it's growing in the distance, and then everybody else is close and then the birds are in the distance. And now as I'm looking at it, 
because I'm going to do this tree. These birds are not going to work there. So I'm going to go ahead and tape them up. See, I taped off the top so I wouldn't do that. I don't want any boo-boos on this one. I can always go back and put the birds in later. So there, that way I won't get a boo-boo and I have my layout. For this one, I've chosen a different color tone. Since I'm going with the giraffe, I'm thinking I want to go more with oranges, reds, browns, a little bit of yellow. So I pulled out some cardinal crimson, some khaki. This is, let's see, jack-o'-lantern, which is the lighter orange. And then I also have harvest orange, which is the darker. And then a little bit darker and brighter yellow. This is a folk art, and this is, let's see, yellow light. I'm also going to be using some of the nutmeg brown that I used in the last one. Now another trick that you can do if you want a really clean horizon line, you can go ahead and tape that off and then you can do the ground or the horizon first, remove the tape, and then you can do the other. Whenever I lay down my tape, I like to leave myself a little tag just to make it easy to remove the tape. So I'm going to start on the ground first. So I taped off my uh, sky. Have a little extra water here because my paint's been sitting for a little bit. Get my brush wet. I'm going to start with the yellow. I'm going to start here and work up. Now this is my ground. Usually on your ground you start lighter that's closest to you and as it goes back it gets darker so that way it shows depth. So I'm going to start here in the front with my yellow. I also still have some white over here so I'm going to mix in a little bit of that. You can see I'm just layering in my colors, putting a little in, and when it's wet, see how nice they just all blend together. Makes it so much easier, a lot less frustrating. Now, depending on what look you're looking for, you can leave it kind of streaky like this. Or you can blend it in. I kind of do a little bit of both. I like to get kind of a blended background and then go back in and do some streaking. So I have a nice clean background. Now I'm going to go back in and add a little bit more. Again, this adds just more texture. It gives you a little bit more dimension and depth to your painting. Now this is a really nice technique. This is something great for you to start with if you're a beginner. That way you can learn how to do your backgrounds first and then you paint as you come forward. And even after this dries, if it dries and it doesn't look the way that you want it to, go back over it until you're really happy with it. Paint does tend to dry lighter than it does 
when you're painting. So as the paint dries, it does tend to get a little lighter looking. So do keep that in mind as you're laying down your paint. Okay, so I'm happy with that as my ground. So now I'm going to re remove the tape here. I have a nice clean horizon line. Okay, so when you're working on your horizon line, you're basically going to do the opposite. I'm going to go light at the horizon line and then work up to getting a little darker. Now I'm not going to do my sky as dark as I did my base. So I've added some more white and I have water if I need to thin it down or lighten it up. So I'm going to start here and work forward. So I'm going to start with my darker color tones. Get in there with some of the khaki first. And again, you want to lay down enough so that you have some wet paint to start with. That makes blending much easier. Let's see, I just laid down a little bit. I didn't want a lot on there, so now I'm going back. You can even get in, get some water to help lighten that up. So to lighten up my yellow, I've added some of the white to the yellow and a little water. And I'm going to come down and I'm going to come right up to my horizon line. Work on filling in. You want to make sure you get enough paint onto your canvas, otherwise, when it dries, it'll pull away and you'll see a lot of white spaces coming through. So, you want to make sure you get enough paint on there. So, if it dries and that happens and you didn't get enough paint, that's okay, just go back over it. The more you do it, the better you will get. And when you do clouds, clouds usually are pretty flat and even on the bottom, but they're not on the top. Okay. So I have my base done. I need to set this aside and let it completely dry before we go ahead and do our stencil work on the top. My base is all nice and dry. I'm really happy with the result. I'm going to get my placement with my stencil. And I got my stencil nice and secure. It seems like it lays a little bit flatter on the uh, canvas board than it did on the actual canvas. So again, I'm going to hold down my stencil and pounce.
once everything has been uh, covered, go ahead and remove your stencil. Okay, so now I'm going to go in and clean up my lines. I just have a detailed brush. Okay, so I've gone around and cleaned up my lines. Now I got a little bit of a drip there. I don't know where it came from, but I am going to turn that into a bird. And then I'm going to just freehand and add a couple more birds here. And there you go. I think that looks really cool. I'm going to set this aside and let it completely dry. Okay, for the last one, I'm going to do it in this direction, more landscape. And I did my horizon line low, so it's only about two inches on the bottom. This time I'm not going to tape it off because I want the back to be very blended. This is going to be an underwater scene. So I pulled out some new colors. I have white, I have Caribbean, Laguna, two blue, Admiral blue, and nutmeg brown. For this one, I'm going to be using this squid. I absolutely love the squid. I might use the dolphin or the sea turtle. And then on this one, I definitely want to use the crab. I may also use one of the other shells. I'm not quite sure how I want to lay it out yet. But I also have this dolphin and a fish that I can use. But on this one, I want it to be underwater, and my silhouettes are going to be white instead of black. I have all my colors, and I also have a small amount of water. That's just so that I can get everything to blend really well. Now I'm going to start with my darkest color here, and I'm just going to get a small amount. I have my water done. Sorry that I didn't get to show you all the way to the end. Uh, my battery just died, so <laughs> this is all nice and dry. I'm now going to go in and do the base, and then I'm going to do a little bit of blending between the two. I'm going to start with my nutmeg brown.
really do like that. I like the colors. I like how well they blended. Okay, I'm going to set this aside and let this fully dry up before I go in and put in any stencil work. My base is all dry. I've got my stencils taped off and taped down to my board. I'm going to do two at a time right here. I'm going to do my squid and then this cute little crab down here. And I've decided I'm going to do my um, stencils in color and show you how to do it that way. So I'm going to start over here with this squid and then I'll come over and do the crab. The squid is lighter color, so I'm going to start with that. Now because the background goes darker to lighter, on the squid I'm going to go lighter to darker so it really shows up well on the background. I want to start with just a little bit of white and a little bit of yellow. And again just pounce up and down. Now I'm going to work on my crab. Okay, well I really like the way my squid came out. On my crab here, once it dries, I can go in and add a little bit of detail with a detail brush. Now I'm going to let this dry, and then I'm going to go in and add a few more stencils. I got the rest of my stencils on. I added two turtles, one kind of coming off, one in the middle, and then two shells. I also took my small little pouncing brush and added some highlights on the crab and the two turtles. So I wanted to show you now, I'm going to go in with a little detailed brush. I have some brown, so now I'm going to go in, I'm going to add some shadows. Just in a few areas of where it would normally be a little darker.
Okay, I got all my stencil work done. I'm really happy with that. I went in and did my detail work. I added some highlight and some shadows. I'm really happy with how that turned out. Now the last thing I'm going to do to finish this off is I want to add just a little bit of greenery and plants. So I'm just going to take my detail brush. I have some green, some blue, some browns. And I just want to add a little bit of something. And there you go, I'm all done. I had a lot of fun playing with the stencils. I think this one came out really cute by using color. And I simply just used my dabbing brush and mixed the colors right on the brush and then dabbed them on. Once it was dry, go back and add a little bit more detail. These are so fun to do and anyone can do them. This is the perfect project for a beginner painter. In these projects, you learn how to blend colors and how to get your background set up. And then you can have fun finishing it off using stencils. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. If you did, please give me a big thumbs up and show me some love in the comments. This really does help out my channel. Let me know in the comments below which one was your favorite. Also, let me know if this is something that you would like to see more of in the future from me. Thanks so much for stopping by. You know it's always a pleasure to see you. I hope everyone is staying happy, healthy, and strong. If you enjoy craft tutorials, make sure to check these out. You have a great day, and I'll catch you next time.